as you can see on that picture, I have 30% humidity. Thank goodness it's not as windy as it was the last two days. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I feel a little bit like I'm a marathon runner trying to keep up with the humidity around some of my orchids. I can't chase them all down at the same time, but uh, I'm trying, but that's what I'm up against. If it's not as windy a day like today, I can keep up a little bit. But the other two days, you start at one end, you run around and have to do it all over again once you're finished. But anyway, thank you everybody for tuning in once again. I have noticed in my recent videos, I just start to yap away and babble on like there's no tomorrow with what regards I want to show you or do. And I forget to welcome you, so I'm really sorry. I'm going to try and do better. I guess you see this is what I talk about when it becomes familiar or there is complacency sorry so welcome thank you so much for being here and yeah bits and bobs and surprises I know it's coming thick and fast but it's what they're doing and I'm just trying to keep up and area hyacinthoides has blessed me with another spike so that was just a little opener I wanted to show you in order to kickstart this what else is going on a lot so let's get to it in the event that you have not read my about section on my channel i give a reason as to why i named my channel ninja orchids because they grow slow they creep up on you stealth mode and they surprise you out of nowhere like a ninja and that is the case with my little Neophenicia falcata shutano. I have two spikes. Now I can say out of nowhere, but that's not entirely true, clearly, out of the fan that I have here. <laughs> but uh, out of nowhere, as in they grow fast. So I noticed these uh, three days ago, and I just wanted to put them up on a clip regarding the ones that I transitioned over into the semi-hydro method and their ceramics down there. So this is the update on my Shutano. Two spikes. I love it. I know, I know, you've seen all this before. But I thought I would kill two birds with one stone while I'm talking to you about what else I've discovered, while I'm showing you some things on my Chao Praia. I have the Papilionante Panduculata also doing something. In the meantime, this is the third time today I have sprayed this orchid down just with RO water or orchids. But um, the reason being, I have, you saw at the beginning of the video, my humidity. So I'm losing my root tips. You can see that there are still some root tips over there, but they are not as long as this one up here. And that means that'll be it until winter. If, for example, in October it's warm enough, they might start growing again. These guys down here are still doing really well, simply because they've got that scraggly <laughs> debris of grass around it. But let's uh, shy away a little bit from the roots. And look at this. Sorry about that jiggle. Look at this. There is Penduculata. Papilionante Penduculata. That's a flower spike. So I am very, very busy keeping this one hydrated. It'll be the first time it would bloom for me. And I'd like to see those blooms if for no other reason than to have them in my records. But other than that, if I have to give her away, at least I can say, yeah, she's blooming size. <laughs> but I'd like to see them first. And they've been allocated, so we need double, double the incentive to get these to bloom. Speaking of roots, isn't this just incredible? I just think this is astonishing. You know, we are repotting, being so cautious with roots and uh, so worried about breaking roots. And we do time and time again. And then you see these roots coming in here through the bark, cracking it apart. Tiny spindly little roots. 
and they do their thing and there is no stopping them. I think that is absolutely remarkable. Let me see if I can go around the other side. Look at that. It's just, some are superficial, but some have gotten in through cracks and nooks and crannies. I think it's astonishing. We snap them so quickly, yet these guys can drill their way through like the English tunnel was drilled. Something like that. And this is uh, the Aphilum roots. Because I have two other dendrobiums on this mound, but no, this is, this is Aphilum on this side. Incredible. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Loving the root action, yes. But I'm also loving the spike action. This would be a first time bloomer. And this is making my heart beat a little bit faster. I'm enjoying this. And I hope that after all these years, it is what I bought. Otherwise, you know, you get that little bit of a boop, 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 boop disappointed moment there but i hope this is my tessellata black we shall see so far she's doing well on that spike and now this one is still looking green right here and i do believe that this one down here will be a dud but that's okay i will forgive her if she even just gives me one valid viable spike Speaking of spikes, Lavender Mist is about to do it again. Number three of the season on the way. Incredible. Currently soaking up in the seaweed. But here we go again. This is awesome. Peggy Ruth Carpenter. One of the very first that I showed you with regards to the roots, etc. If they grow out a little bit aerial, what do I do? How do I get it acclimatized into semi-hydro? This is a perfect opportunity to show you because this is exactly what I do even now that the plant is established in Lekka and in this case self-watering. The concept is the same. This is what I do and thankfully it's the time of year that I can be aggressive about it. I know this is not everybody else's remedy, but you don't have to be that aggressive about it. You can go in and be a little bit more targeted just to hydrate the roots, keep the moisture and the surface humid. So another thing that needs to be done, I would say, in this case, I could remove the lower bract leaf there. If it's not gonna come off by itself and dry up, that it will help it as well, take off that leaf. You can see that here, the new growth came out below the bract leaf. That makes everything so much easier. The same as with this root system right here, no bracts to be removed. I just have two, one. I just have the one back there. This one here that needs to maybe get some assistance. What have we got in here? No, there's nothing. So yeah, long time ago, a little follow up. That is what I do. Thank goodness it's summer, but you can do the same, a little bit more targeted. And this, there's nothing wrong with this. It's not in any way, shape or form compromised. This is cell damage from when I got it very, very early days. And during its transition period, it was so desiccated that it literally formed like an inverted C. It was so desiccated. So this is just cell damage from back then, but there's nothing wrong now. All good with Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Ah, it's time to wash out a Ziploc bag. It didn't work for me again. Ah, the theory behind propagating foul spikes. Yeah, we got another one. Another one bites the dust. So this little one did not work for me. I am going to keep trying. I will one day get it right. So that's done. But next to it, if you remember, we had some fire spike propagation going on as well. And I am left with two. 
So they're okay. I'm seeing a little bit of mold down here, but it's firm. So I'm going to spray one more time with hydrogen peroxide just to keep that at bay. I am left with two. I had five. But let me show you what else I'm planning to do and see if that works. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I forgot. I still had this little guy that I was showing you last time. So a couple of days ago, I cleaned up two blackened leaves on the outer edge. I'm still left with the original growth and there's some little root nubbins there. And that little additional growth that's come out, but no root growth I can actually write home about. That's what I want to see. We'll keep trying. And the best way to do that is leave it where it is and not bring it out here in the hot wind. But I just had to show you. This is the spike of the Fios Tancambile that I had to cut off the blooms. They were spent. But it's not eating up its spike. So yes, I'm tempted to take it apart and do what I'm doing now and see if I can propagate it. But I'm also tempted to see if it's going to do anything while it's still on the plant, you know? So I'm protecting, one is exposed, but that was done on its own. I didn't take that off. These nubbins here, they are protected still by that sheath. So with the heat, I'm not entirely sure if I should take one or two off and then see how they develop or if they dry up or keep them protected. So your, any suggestions you might have that you want to see, let me know. I can see a little bit of wrinkling here on the flower spike, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's bad. It, it's not like it's desiccating. It's dried off nicely at the top. So let me know. I have one unexposed. We won't count that one. That looks compromised. And I have everything else covered up. Let me know in the comments if you want me to take some of these off and document that and see what happens. So thank you ever so much for joining me for a little bit more of bits and bobs and surprises. And I hope it's not too repetitive, but for my own personal sake now, I like to document it this way. I do have my app. I do keep up with that as well, but this is a wonderful reminder. I can go back and check things out. So this is my wildcat, golden red star, beautifully in bloom. And they're not quite touching. But Dendrobium Victoria Regina as well, not to be outdone. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I really appreciate you being here. Remember, if you can, if you want, comment on in the comments below regarding the Fias spike. Should I take those nodes off or leave them covered? Take care, everybody. Bye.